Hey everybody, what's good? Anthony here. I'm back with another Ableton Live tutorial. And this time we're going to talk about how to set up a MIDI controller uh, to play all the voices that you would ever need to use in your live set, even if each one of those voices takes a lot of CPU. There is a way to program them so they can all be played at different times in your set without having to have them all on at the same time. But before I get into that, um, if you're a musician that uses Ableton Live um, and you use it on stage or you think you're going to use it on stage at some point soon, um, do yourself a favor and uh, click that subscribe button down there and maybe even the little bell so you know when I upload another video. Um, it'll be really worth it for you, I promise. I'm, I'm constantly uploading videos about uh, different techniques for uh, streamlining your live set and how to use Ableton Live on stage and use all of its capabilities and all of the, the potential possibilities that come with that. So let's get right into it. Um, this is this set you see right here is commonly what you see when somebody uses Ableton Live on stage. Um, they have each one of their instruments in a different track. Uh, we got a piano, a Rhodes, uh, a Serum voice, a Reactor Prism voice, an Omnisphere voice, and then um, a Collision voice from Ableton Live. Um, so most of the time people will do this. They'll have, you know, their piano. And then they'll have like controllers that they can select different tracks. Right, so we're just going around and I, I've, I've mapped some of these uh, buttons here on this keyboard to just arm these different tracks. Now, there's nothing necessarily wrong with this way of doing it, except um, if you have a lot of songs and you have a lot of different instruments you like to use and potentially you like to use really high quality instruments that take a lot of uh, CPU to run, um, you're going to run into problems as you keep adding voices to your set. Right now we're idling at 15% uh, CPU. Uh, if I play some of these more uh, CPU intensive voices like this Omnisphere voice, I guess that's not too bad, the prism. We get these little spikes in there. Looks like Serum's taking up a lot. So what I want you to pay attention to is the fact that the CPU is idling around 15 to 16%, okay? And I'm able to call up my voices instantly. Um, but the idle speed is just so high. And if I were to add a lot more voices, I'm going to start running into problems with my CPU. So how do we get around this problem? Well, I'm going to show you this really awesome way of doing it. Check it out. I'm going to load up another set where I've got each one of these voices in its own instrument rack. Okay, so now let's look at this idle speed. We're idling at around 4% and I have the piano active. Okay, so I still have the same functionality I had before. If I click this button, you'll notice that that CPU will spike up to 16, but it only spikes up to that 16 when I have Serum loaded, or Omnisphere, the marimba voice. But if I don't have anything running at all, then my idle speed at this point is hovering around 4%. So the way this is done is by using an instrument rack and what are known as dummy clips. These are little dummy clips. They don't really do anything by themselves, but they help me switch through the instruments in this instrument rack. I've created a tutorial video to show you exactly how to do this um, and it's available on my Gum Road site. Just click on the link down there um, and you can take it. Um, the reason I put it on there is because I feel like it's easier to organize my lesson series videos on Gum Road instead. Um, so thanks a lot for watching. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe. If you want to take the lesson, once again, just click that link down there. It's totally free um, if you want it to be. And thank you very much for watching.